Hi everyone, we're going to work through an example of how to find the volume of a solid of revolution by using the washer method. Of course, the washer method is similar to the disk method, except for that hole in the middle. So in this problem, we have a region bounded by a cubic function, y equals x cubed, the y-axis and the line y equals 1, and we are revolving that region about the line x equals 1, that vertical line and we are asked to find the volume of the resulting solid. So go ahead and graph it on your graphing calculators. I've go already gone ahead and done that and taken a snapshot for you. And I have adjusted my window to make it look nice for us. So if you go back to the problem and read about the region we're talking about. So we're bounded by the blue curve, which is the cubic, the y-axis over here on the, the left, um, on the top side, that horizontal line at y equals 1. And our axis of revolution is the vertical line x equals 1. So let's maybe draw that in, if I can draw a vertical line at all. all right, so this is x equals 1, and that's our axis of revolution. So the region that we're talking about is the one that you see in yellow. So if we want to take that region and revolve it around that vertical line x equals 1, imagine taking just that yellow part and flipping it over that vertical line. So when we do that, you know, it kind of flops over to here, sort of like that, you know, very, very roughly. All right, so you can try to imagine in your head what the resulting solid might look like. So with the washer method, our representative rectangle, similar to the disk method, is perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So in this case, it's going to be going horizontally. So this is going to become a dy problem. But notice the representative rectangle is not touching the axis of revolution. All right, that is the major difference between the washer method and the disk method. So if you think about the basic setup, as we talked about in the lesson, we know that our formula, if you want to think of it that way, is going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Big R squared is going to be the distance from the axis of revolution to the far side of the rectangle. So that's going to be this part right here. All right, so let's maybe come up with an expression for that first. All right, and we're going to use this right minus left idea. All right, so if we want an expression for a big R, on the right, it's hitting the vertical line, x equals 1. On the right, it, on the left, it's hitting the y-axis. So we're doing right minus left. On the right, it's hitting the vertical line. On the left, it's hitting the y-axis. So that capital R is 1. Now for little r. Now, little r is the distance from the axis of revolution to the close side of the representative rectangle. So little r is going to be this little part in here. It's basically the radius of the hole. All right, so once again, we're going to use this idea of right minus left. So on the right, little r is hitting the axis of revolution. On the left, though, it's hitting the curve, which is x cubed. But it's a dy problem, so we cannot use x cubed. We need to put it in terms of y, so we can't use that. So we have to use it as y to the one-third. All right, if you go back and rearrange the original equation and solve for x, you get y to the one-third. All right, so those become the pieces that we're going to need to set up our integral. So let's go back to the previous page and we'll go ahead and set it up. So our volume 
since it was a dy problem, our limits of integration need to be y values. So let's take a look at the graph again. And our y values are going from 0 on the low end up to a positive 1. And pi. Then remember, we need big R squared. So big R, remember, was 1 minus little r was 1 minus y to the 1 third. And just don't forget to square that. All right, so you are most welcome to evaluate that in your calculator. Um, you could just do the definite integral part excluding the pi. If you wanted to do that, you would get 0.9 pi. Interesting it comes out like that actually 0.9. Um, if you wanted to multiply the pi in and just obtain a pure decimal answer, it would be approximately 2.827. And again, if by chance you needed to include units of measure, since it is a volume problem, it would be in cubic units.